Hey guys, it's Paul, and I got Mama Cat here hanging out with me. She's looking pretty good for 16 years, right? Speaking of looking good for their age, this is my Ultimaker 2 Plus. I got this in 2014. I did the upgrade to bring it from a 2 to a 2 Plus, and it's time to give it some love again. Right now, the uh, flex bed needs to be replaced. That is a Biltac surface. That was great in the day, but it's getting kind of worn out. So what I've done is I've purchased a Wham Bam bed system. So that's what we're going to put inside the Ultimaker 2 Plus here shortly. The other part of the upgrades and giving it some love here is we're going to give it an enclosure. Printed Solid makes an enclosure for this and it goes across the top and there's going to be a door in the front. Are you trying to get away? <laughs> but uh, and then on the back of that enclosure is going to be an air filtration. It's a carbon air filter. So we're going to install that on the back of that. So that's what we're going to do in this video and hang in there and we're going to start upgrading right away. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Paul. This is my YouTube channel where nerdy is cool. I'm all about 3D printing, 3D printing filaments, uh, printer reviews, you know, a lot of how to's, how to print safely, uh, how to calibrate, how to tune, Basically, how to get the most out of your 3D printer. I'm also a big nerd. I have an R2D2, I have a Stormtrooper suit, I have a Batman suit. You get the idea. I'm definitely qualified as a nerdy guy. So, welcome to my channel. 97% of you guys are not subscribers, and I really wish you were. So, hit the button down below, become a subscriber. I don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. Okay, so the first part of the upgrade we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the new bed system. So, we're going to be using Wham Bam Bed Systems. We have their bed, we have the magnet, put that all over here. And what we currently have is what I did with the Biltac system is, let me unclip this. Now here's what's the important part about this when I say clip, okay? Because as you can see, one, two, three, four. So we have these cutaways and the magnet when it was sent to me from, I think I just printed solid already had these cut out for me so that I could just put this magnet on top of the glass bed. So this accounts for the clips. So the clips don't interfere with the magnetic bed. They don't interfere with the bed sheet as well too, because the bed sheet has all the clearances. Didn't really stick it on there perfect, but you get the idea. So you might be thinking to yourself, why not just take the wham bam bed surface Too many magnets here. Just use this and put it on top of the glass bed. Well, I can't do that because from the back side here, and I'll just pop this back and forth, is what's going to happen here is these tabs for the wham bam are going to cover those areas where the clips would need to be. So if the clips go under, they're going to push the bed upward, and you get the idea from there. So the better way of doing this is we're going to have to do, well, kind of three things, okay? So we're going to raise the bed so that we can get at the screws and at the bottom here. And we're going to be removing these clips. We're not going to need them. So we'll get, we'll take those all apart. We'll pull the clips out, put them back together. So once we are free of the clips, what we'll do is we'll clean the bed surface. Rubbing alcohol will work perfectly fine. We'll clean it thoroughly because we want to make sure our the oils on our hands don't touch. So we want to make sure that it's as oil free as possible so we can get the wham bam magnet in there. And once the magnet is in there, we have to wait 72 hours because that's how long it takes for this 3M adhesive to really grip into that bed. And when that's all said and done, we'll be able to put our wham bam bed surface on and do our first prints on it. So that is our process for doing that. Okay, so here we go. Just gonna undo that M3 screw, which is uh, connected to the bottom of that thumb wheel. And after a couple turns, I'll be able to grab the bottom of the thumb screw. There we go. So I can either hold that or turn that. It's a little easier to get there. And once I have that thumb screw out, there it goes. We just have to pinch the bed a little bit just to compress that spring. This way we can get the M3 screw out. 
And if you're really good, gently lift the bed up here and that clip will come right out. And now it's just the reverse order, just putting that back together. We're gonna do the same thing for the uh, left side. And I decided to leave the rear clips in. They're really not gonna bother anything. They're kind of hard to get at inside the Ultimaker. And honestly, where they are, uh, when it's time to put the spring steel back in, and of course, when you're trying to make sure it's all aligned with the magnet, uh, having those two act as stoppers uh, actually works out pretty well. Okay, we're gonna uh, thoroughly clean this. We got uh, some 91% IPA, we got a microfiber cloth. And just gonna dump a bunch of that on there. Uh, the thing is, is you wanna make sure you clean it and don't touch it. <laughs> Gotta watch out for those sharp edges here. Because the enemy of this thing is the oils on your fingers. So we just want to make sure, get it good and clean, and then dry. And we can start messing with the magnet. I'm just going to flip over the cloth here, and if I see any spots that I think need some additional cleaning. But right now that looks really, really good. And this has, uh, as you can see, this is bending around. Uh, the Ultimaker 2 has a uh, three point bed leveling. So uh, spring, spring, spring. So that's why when I move around here, it's bouncing around. Okay. Now we have the magnet. <clears throat> And as you can check on their website, they give a lot of information on how to do this properly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna peel up just the first probably uh, inch here, uh, try to get lined up where it should be, apply pressure, uh, starting from the middle then out because we don't want to trap any air in here. Uh, and then as we uh, apply the magnet, <clears throat> we'll start peeling more and repeat that process to get that all on here. Okay, about that much is a good start. Of course, the bed's gonna wanna move too. With it laying on the wax paper, it helps you kinda line her up. And I'm not quite where I want to be, so I'll pull you back a little bit. And right about there is where I want to press and slide. Actually, I'm going to push this bed all the way down so it's not fighting me anymore. Okay. So we're going to pull this back a little bit further. Okay. So the one thing to note is that <clears throat> The screw heads, with this magnet now being in place, those screw heads are now covered up. So uh, in the future, if we have to get at them or do something with them, uh, we will have to chop this up a little bit. I debated doing that before I did this, but I haven't, <laughs> I've had this printer for seven years. I haven't had to access these bed screws. So 
with any luck. If we ever have to replace the bed heater, that might be a different story, but this looks really good. And I think the bed clips kind of help me line up where that should be. That looks good. And I think I already removed the protective coating. I did, yep. Yeah, so I'm glad I left those clips in there because what I can do is I can slide in, go as far as the clips, and then down. There it is. They did a really good job packing this box up and right now we're getting everything for the enclosure unpacked. It's uh, wrapped up in a lot of cardboard and all of those uh, pieces also have uh, plastic, uh, the protective coating on the ACM as, as, as well as the acrylic pieces as well too. And as you can see with my Charlie Brown head here, I'm going through and peeling off the protective layers on the ACM, which is aluminum composite material. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the acrylic pieces as well. The assembly, uh, the first couple of steps are awkward because you need something to hold and help things line up. So I grabbed one of my filament containers in a moment here just to kind of help hold things up. And the construction is the ACM and you're using the M3 hardware, which they include, M3 screws. And they also have the uh, square nuts. And that's largely how the whole thing goes together. It's a, it's a fun build. It goes together fairly quickly and I enjoyed it. And uh, got the door that works. Door's been cleaned. You used the uh, IPA and a microfiber cloth again. The uh, top of the enclosure, it's a little interesting because uh, right now I have it sitting kind of on the lip there. And I'm noticing that that piece in the center um, over here uh, isn't really touching. So I don't know if that piece should be maybe a little longer uh, because my preference would be to have this sit a little further back, but that makes that even further. So I sent them an email to ask about that, but uh, I'll press on. I mean, this is fine. It's still working as an enclosure. And in the back, part of the shadows here. So I got one of the uh, ports sealed up. And on this one, we're gonna put the 3D Upfitters carbon filter back there. So let's do that. Okay, so this is the uh, 3D Upfitter carbon filter. Uh, it's USB powered. We got the fan back here. And there's the uh, exhaust. Uh, and then there's this adapter here because we have to go from this size to that bigger size on the back here. So I believe that's, if I recall correctly, that's 80 millimeters on this, and this brings it down to 60 millimeters. And then we have these holes now the hardware here is all M4 and two things I could do. I can just widen these holes out and just pass them through or what I like to do is I use an M4 tap. So what I'll do is these will be threaded. So it's just a, you know, a little extra you know, holding power uh, for this uh, filter to the back of the enclosure. So I will start doing that now. Boy, oh boy, I've lost track of how many times I say, okay, I'm, I'm really, really self-diagnosing myself as I edit here. So I use the, uh, the drill with the uh, uh, M4 tap and those holes are now threaded. And essentially we're just getting everything put together for the carbon uh, filter. And I did a quick sanity check. I have uh, five of these on other machines and yep, just verified a question I had and the adapter went on. Sometimes there's one screw that doesn't quite catch the nut in the bottom, but uh, Got it sorted out, and as we'll see here in a moment, it threads in very nicely and it stays in place.
get it all back together again. And there. And this guy centered it up. A USB cord hanging there. All right, so there it all is. With everything all done, get that in the corner. And uh, what I'll do is I, I don't know if I have a, a plug that will reach this. A worst case, I'll plug into the uh, Raspberry Pi that I use. But uh, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so I mentioned I wanted to address that gap in the back of the enclosure and I did reach out to Printed Solid and they said, nope, that's, it's, it's that way for a reason. They didn't want the Bowden tube to be interfered with and and that's fine. Uh, and this is a half right here where the Bowden tube is. Uh, this side where I have, you know, the intake for the uh, 3D Outfitters filter, uh, I made this and I had to trim out this piece because I forgot that <laughs> the way this corner is. And so I found that largely, of course I can't do it while I'm holding the camera at the same time, but it largely, yeah, there it is, snaps in place. And that was my first draft, I'm using Tinkercad. I mean, it's just, <laughs> that's what I know how to use. And I found for the first try, it wasn't too, too bad. Uh, the, there's a little spot here I wanted to make a little bit longer. And so what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, there's my new version. And over here, you can see where it's been sliced and it's been printed. And let's take a peek at it. And there it is. So we'll give this guy a pop that off the wham bam. All right, we'll kind of do this in real time here. Pop you off. Okay, let's see how well we did here. Let me uh, set up the camera. You look good. I think it's better if it goes right here. Hey, good. Well, the good news is I didn't snap anything. Everything fits in there nice. I'll be honest, I'm kind of surprised the tolerance are as good as they are. Um, that'll probably stay in place. So what you can see now, ta-da. So let's go put this on the printer and see how it looks. You can see how so we have this open for the Bowden tube. Actually, you know, it would be kind of nice to put here, it'd be like a brush grommet. But uh, let's <laughs> stick the camera up there and you can see how that, and I can put some, you know, painter's tape on the other side of that or whatever. But yeah, so that, uh, at least the, uh, when a fan is running, it's not just pulling an air from the outside of the printer, it's actually gonna be pulling air from inside the printer. So not bad. Okay, a couple of thoughts after the installation and using it for a couple of weeks. So first of all, when you're doing the whole bed leveling, a couple of things, take the enclosure top off. It's really tough to get inside of there with a piece of paper or a fuel gauge, whatever you use, uh, because you're gonna have to bring that the bed a lot higher than usual because you don't have the glass bed there anymore. You have the wham bam and the magnet. The other thing is you wanna make sure that the springs don't go super tight on them. Keep them a little bit on the, you know, in the mid range because as it is right now, as you bring this bed up to get to the, to the surface, uh, you're gonna find that just looking at the back of the printer, you're near the top end of what the Ultimaker can do as far as Z-Travel. And the springs will accommodate and you'll be able to level just fine, but I did notice that, wow, I'm getting near the top here. So, because usually what I would do with my other machines is I would crank up those springs nice and tight. Uh, I would do my bed leveling and then I would have those, you know, all that, you know, range on the springs to bring it up higher as I needed. Uh, the Ultimaker doesn't have nearly as much throw or distance, you know, as some of my other machines. So just be aware of that. Uh, and then, you know, once you have everything covered back up, you're ready to go. You can adjust as you need to uh, for your first layer to get a perfect first layer. 
and a few other things here. You'll see in the red here, got a door handle. Again, that's another item I'll post down below on Thingiverse. That works great. When I was putting this together, I noticed that the door was staying, well, it was doing a good job staying shut, but uh, over the last couple weeks doing prints, I noticed that door kind of kicking open a little bit. So uh, that was a super easy print. So that's on the front of the enclosure now and the door stays shut, works great. And speaking of airflow and drafts, I was not crazy about the gap in the back of the Ultimaker between the enclosure and the back of the printer. I mean, we have a carbon air filter, but you want to make sure that it's filtering the air within the printer, not just outside the back of the printer. So uh, on Thingiverse, I came up with a design like this. I've since tweaked it a few times. And as you can see in the video, uh, what it's doing is it's just basically sealing off that side of the printer. Uh, I haven't gone all the way across because I didn't want to interfere with the Bowden tube with the electrical cable going to the print head. So that says something simple. And like I said, I'll post that in Thingiverse and I'm sure someone else will tweak it better than I did. But I just wanted to make sure that, you know, if we're in closing, I just want to make sure, especially if we're filtering, uh, we're filtering what's inside the machine. Okay, so what did everything cost? Well, the enclosure came from Printed Solid and that was $190. You can get that through them. You can also get it from Matter Hackers. I happen to be an affiliate there, so I'll have a link down below. And the surface was from Wham Bam. This is the 258 by 230 and it's $64. That's the magnetic sheet. That's the PEX and the uh, spring steel. It's already all pre-applied. And uh, the next part was the carbon air filter that came from 3D Upfitters and that was $59. So about 300 bucks in upgrades and it uh, went together fairly smoothly. Okay, that's it for this time. I invite you to check out my activities I'm doing on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course the website where nerdyiscool.com. And that's it. If you haven't checked out, by the way, my web forums, I know a lot of you guys aren't crazy about the whole social media thing. 3dprintingforum.us, I've had that forum going for a long time. Feel free to drop in there. There's a lot of folks in there that have been 3D printing since this stuff came off patent. So if you have questions, no matter what kind of wonky printer you have, check out the forums, you might enjoy it. So that's it for this time. I thank you guys for watching. If you're not a subscriber, please become one. That'd be great. And that's it. Remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Take care. Here I am, down to five, four. Also gonna help with safety. You really want out of here, don't you? All right, let's have a and that's going to be attached. I can see the cat here is hanging in the air. Isn't that great? So anyway, I'm going to press on. This will be the, this will be the take. <laughs> but so enclosure uh, between the enclosure. Five, four.